Is it still loving? No. Yeah. With the lighting of this third candle, the season of Advent is already half complete. Let us remember that Christ's first coming was a wonderful gift from our Heavenly God to all the nations. His second coming will be no different. It will also be for the entire world. Luke 2, 9 through 11, the gift of great joy. Then an angel of the Lord stood before the shepherds, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news 
of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to Faith Family United Church of Christ. I am Ed Kostelnik. I am the pastor here. Welcome to all you out there in Facebook. Um, I hope that, uh, that you enjoy our services as much as we enjoy um, having you with us. Here at Faith Family, we are an open and affirming uh, congregation. Um, we believe that all God's children should be welcome to worship with us and with everyone. Um, we have a little saying here. It goes, no matter where you are on life's journey or where you are on your spiritual journey, you are welcome here. And we truly, truly mean that. Um, here in a little bit, we're going to have communion together as we do each and every week. Um, for you at, at home, if you would like to gather up the elements um, bread and, or crackers, uh, wine or juice, and uh, we'll go ahead and we'll bless them together and uh, we'll partake of the Lord's Supper together. Um, I don't see any any visitors. Any visitors? No. Just the birthday girl, right? Yes, sir. Oh. oh. <laughs> you went there. I went there right away. Right away. It is, it is Natalie. She said, she said she's actually a, a year older. She's not going to lie about her age. She's 26. She's not 25 anymore. She's 26. So. Happy 26th birthday. Thank you. Let's go ahead and get our worship started with our call to worship. Joy to the world. humble confidence. We pray that we heed the directions of John the Baptist to be honest, to share generously, to stand humbly before the Lord and other people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for all those battling the coronavirus, for medical care workers, and for success soon in our efforts to subdue the virus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those suffering from physical and emotional pain, and for all who are weighted down with worry, guilt, or despair, that this season of hope may be restored and comforted. This we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those struggling with depression, loneliness, and various addictions, may they find new joy in life through the love and power of God and our own respect and care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. That those serving in the military and law enforcement do so in safety and integrity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. For the world, for mercy and justice, for rich and poor alike, for freedom from tyranny and oppression, and for a time of peace and tranquility for all peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Peter asks prayers for his neighbor as she is expecting a child and dealing with health issues around her pregnancy. We ask healing prayers for Betty Jenkins, prayers for all the tornado victims in Kentucky and Ohio, we ask blessings for Lisa and Tiffany, who stopped by this morning for help. We raised enough money for them to spend the night in a campground. Watch over them, O Lord, and carry them to your, in your arms. A congregant asks prayers for a sister and husband, working hard to get a job. O Lord, as we prepare to celebrate the birth of Jesus, we lift up these prayers and many more, unspoken and even as we give you thanks, this we pray. The love and peace of our God be with you all. Now is the time in our service when we get to share the love and peace of God with those that are here and those that are out there on Facebook and just anyone else that happens to come across this video. So, love and peace to everyone. Love and peace to you out there on Facebook. If you want to uh, type your love and peace at the bottom of the screen there, um, we, would, we would much appreciate that. A reading from Luke 3, verses 7 through 18. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourself, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from the stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now, the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, What then should we do? In reply, he said to them, Whoever has two coats must share one with anyone who has none. And whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, And we, what should we do? He said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusations, and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectations, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah. John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the throng of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His wind-wing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor 
and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the shaft he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. Everybody got all their Christmas shopping done yet? No. Has anybody started? We have long lists. I know, remember when my kids were, were younger, they always wrote a list. And sometimes you'd get the list and they'd say, and on the back. Oh. <laughs> so, very, very stressful time of year. It's hard. Um, let me tell you, I, I am so stressed out. I don't, uh, sometimes I wonder if I can make it through seasons like this. All the work, finishing up the school semester. You all aren't writing the papers. I, I have to write the papers. But I thank everybody for, for helping me with the interviews. But sometimes, this time of year, I get down. I really get down. I look at the world and it's supposed to be a time of joy. A time when we all come together and show love and kindness. But yet, the hustle and bustle of the season sometimes brings out the worst. And I see that. And I was just reading Jeremiah. Jeremiah is known as the weeping prophet. And uh, I can see why. How sad it is to know that our world can live in harmony, but yet we don't choose to. And it's hard. It's very hard. But I have something that I fall back on, and that is my inner joy. Joy that does not come from anything outside. <clears throat> Joy that does not come from a present someone gave me. Joy that does not come from watching a video of a puppy playing on a pool cover, even though that's very satisfying. <laughs> but that's not where my joy comes from. My joy comes from inside, knowing who I am and who I am to God. And that's what I have to fall back on at this time when I get down. I actually wrote this sermon Monday. Actually, I wrote a chapter. Okay? It's 28 pages long. <laughs> So, uh, if you want to get a drink, no, no, no. I decided that, that I would I would not do that. Um, I was going to talk about altruism and how there's no real altruism, no true altruism. <laughs> that even when we do something for someone else that has nothing to do with us, we still get that little tinge of joy. And I was going to talk about the inner joy that we have, and the external joys that we seek sometimes, which is actually happiness. But anyway, I decided to shorten it down, so we're down to roughly seven pages. And if I keep talking, it'll keep growing, right? Anyway, I was watching a video the other day. Um, Kyle Martin, he was a valedictorian of King's Academy, when he graduated high school in 2019. And he gave a speech. He stood in front of the, the, the whole school, the audience, the, the, the teachers, and the parents, and he was all decked out. He had his stole that showed that he was a valedictorian. He had like five different chords that showed he was in the National Honor Society, and he was part of the, the English uh, group that he was in, and all these different things. 
and he stood up there, very accomplished in what he did, and he told the people he was sad because he had wanted to be the valedictorian. And he went after it, and he stood there on the day of the banquet, and he received his award, and he received his stole, and he said, that joy lasted for about 15 seconds. And on the 16th second, he thought, is that all? He was seeking joy, seeking accomplishment externally to validate who he was. And he realized, is that all there is? And he said, he said to his classmates, he says, learn from this. This is a lesson that I learned early. And I'm glad I learned it now at the age of 18 and not at the age of 50 or 60. And that is, there needs to be an internal joy in things that you do, who you are, and the people and the relationships you have. Very wise, very wise young man at the age of 18. Christianity.com, I found this. Happiness is external. See, they, they call it happiness. They don't call it joy. It's happiness. Joy is internal. One of the very obvious differences between happiness and joy is that happiness tends to be achieved externally, while joy is something achieved internally. For example, we can feel happy when we receive something like a gift, or achieve something like awards or honors. These things are external and belong on the surface of our lives. It is not something deeper, but rather superficial. Wow, when I read that, I think to myself, here I am, I strove, I wanted to be your pastor. And I sat up here as your pastor. I want to... Go and get my doctor. And I'm going to get my doctor. I am seeking my ordination. And these are all external things. They're not who I am. So that lesson comes to me full force right now. Last night, I don't know if any of you watched it, but it was the Heisman Trophy. Heisman Trophy is awarded to the... To the most outstanding player, and congratulations to uh, Bryce Young from Alabama, won the, uh, the award by all the sports writers. And one of the persons presented it was Robert Griffin III, RG3. He was the 2011 Heisman Trophy winner. 2011, 10 years ago, no longer in football. Interesting. The most prestigious award you can win in college football, and yet so many of them don't even play in the pros. I say don't even play. They don't produce in the pros. In other words, they don't reach that greatness that they received in college. Remember Johnny Manziel? Mark Ingram? He actually did well in the NFL for one year. Sam Bradford, he did well in the emergency rooms and, and the hospitals. <laughs> Tim Tebow, the baseball player. Yeah. Matt Liner. I didn't even know this name. Jason White. I forgot all about this guy. Eric Couch, Danny Werfel, all of them Heisman Trophy winners. And that was their crowning achievement. External success. Interesting thing is, two of those on their list, Danny Werfel and Tim Tebow, are ministers. So I think they get that. But what happens when, the time, when that moment is over, when the popularity fades, when 
where the joy, where does your joy in life come from? When we seek external joy, it's only an accomplishment. It doesn't say who we are as a person. And when we accomplish something, there's always that question, what next? What next? It's kind of like the, the, the New England Patriots. They win a football game, they get up in the press conference, and they say, we're off to the next game. <coughs> they don't even cherish what they accomplished right there, the win. That's the way it is when people are constantly seeking external joy or happiness as Christianity.com says. But internal joy comes from knowing your worth as a person. That you are made in the image of God. And to know that no matter what, God cares and loves for you personally. That is that internal joy. Now what did that have to do with our text? Right? Well, if you noticed in our text, there were three types of people that were coming to John. The Jews, the tax collectors, and the soldiers. At least those are the three that they pointed out to us. Now John's reply to them was, Bear fruit. Worthy of repentance. Now, we, we, I, I'm sure that we've all heard what repentance means. It's actually a military word that when the soldiers are marching, the, the guy, uh, the, the, the person in charge would, would say to them, repent. And they would turn around and go the other way. So, John is telling us to bear fruit Worthy of turning our lives around and going the other way. And he says, bear good fruit. Bear good fruit. The first people to come to John were the Jews. And they looked at themselves and they said, we are fine. We are Abraham's offspring we are God's chosen people. But John warns them. That can be taken away from you. You can be John, you can be God's chosen people today, but God can raise up another people tomorrow. Don't rely on your heritage for your satisfaction. For your joy. The second group that John that comes to John is the tax collectors. Now, the way the tax collecting worked back then, you you were hired, kind of like it does today. You're hired here in Florida, right? You're hired to go and collect taxes, and then they give you a fee, or the, the, they're given a fee, or that part of their being the tax collector since they're elected, right? Elected. And uh, they're told how much they can charge. Well, that's basically not the way it worked back then. Back then, the tax collector said, you know, I need some extra money this month, so whatever I choose is what the, you're going to have to pay. And a lot of people did not like tax collectors back then because they were kind of shady people. And they got rich off of being the tax collector. But John says to them, do not charge more than what is your portion. In other words, be fair to the people. Don't be shame. They were looking for extra for themselves. That wealth. They were seeking their joy through gaining wealth. The next people that come to John were the soldiers. And John says to them, don't extort money. 
You see, that was their thing. When Jesus says, if you're told to carry the pack one mile, carry it two miles. That was one of the things that the soldiers did. They used their power to oppress and to hold the people down. And in some cases, they used that power for extort, extortion of money. And John says to them, do not seek wealth this way. Do not look for your joy here. All three of these groups are seeking joy externally. Their ancestors, their power over the people, the ability to make money at others' expenses. John is pointing them in the direction of the Messiah. As a matter of fact, what John said, they thought he might be the Messiah. But John says, no, he is not the and he is telling them about the Messiah, the good news, the good news of an internal joy, knowing that God loves you so much that God would come to earth, Emmanuel, and be with us. Not in what John was saying, do not put all of your worth, all of your joy in what power you think you have. But because you are made in the image of God and God loves you no matter what. No matter what. This is where you can have that inner joy. God loves you no matter what. This is internal joy. This is what we fall back on when times are stressful. We don't need someone to come up and, and show us the cute little cat pushing the vase off the table to get a chuckle. Because when the video is gone, so does the joy. But that inner joy, knowing that you are worth so much to God. That's the joy of inner joy. And there's two other things that is said in this chapter. Talked about unquenchable fire. Now, I know about you, but my mind immediately goes to, oh my gosh, we're going to throw people in hell. But what did John say before that? He said, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit and with fire. You see, if we've already been in the fire, then that unquenchable fire won't burn us up. We will pass through that fire and not perish. Left heaven in the form, left hand heaven and came to earth in the form of a child to bring God's love and grace to all. We do this every year in the end of December. We celebrate this birth. It is time of great joy as people around the world try to emulate the gift of, of one, the, the, the gift which is so wonderful. God has promised the forgiveness of our sins from the very first sin to set all people free. And so it is a time when we can witness to the love God has for everyone. And that is why Christmas is such a welcomed and celebrated time of year. But as Christmas, but as Christians, excuse me, as followers of Christ, we have the same chance each week. At the communion table, the Lord has invited us to remember the love and the grace that once came to dwell on this world in person. 
we can celebrate the fact that Christ has come into the world and forgiven our sins, setting us free to pursue a life of love, the same life that God taught us in the life of Christ. As we remember the joy, the great joy, of God's love and grace, let us partake of this meal as a witness to all the world of Emmanuel, God with us, God's grace and love to all. The Lord Jesus Christ himself invites you to come and partake of this great gift of grace. Please join Please join me in the prayer of transformation and consecration. O oh God, the eternal creator, we ask you in the name of the Christ to bless and sanctify this bread and this wine to the souls of all those who partake of them, that they may eat and drink in remembrance of the body and the cup of the New Testament and witness to you, O oh God the great eternal creator, the sustainer of life. We ask that you bless and prosper this meal, that you bless and prosper this congregation, and you bless and prosper those taking part in this communion. As we seek to become one body, the body of Christ, and one in you. Amen. Don't, don't stand up. Let's go ahead and uh, say the Lord's Prayer together. And please feel free to use whatever language that you, uh, that you is closest to your heart for the divine. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For it is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Here at Faith Family, we offer an open communion, because it is the Lord Christ who invites you to this. The body of Christ. the cup of the new covenant. A prayer of thanksgiving. Merciful and loving God, thank you for intervening in our life and allowing us to have a personal relationship with you. Thank you for your love for this day and forever. Thank you for sending and being the Christ, Emmanuel, God with us. Thank you for the blessings you've given us, our families and our friends. Help us to use the blessings that you bless us with and bless each other and bless all the world. May we live a life of true joy, a life of love today and forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
the mince basket and bring it forward. Yeah. What else did you do in college? <laughs> that's like that's like Las Vegas. What happens in college stays in college. <laughs> <laughs> um, Noel, does anybody know what Noel means? No. Oh, no, 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 the, the one with the, um, the, 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 the coats. Uh, yeah, we want, want those, though. This is wonderful. This is more. <laughs> Noel actually comes from a Latin, no tall, which means place and time of birth. So when we sing Noel, we're talking about, of course, God's place and time of birth, the Christ time of birth. I'm going to so, so Noel, when we say the first Noel, we're expecting a second Noel, or Christ's second. So I thought that was interesting. So even though we think of that as a Christmas song, it's actually also a, a revelation or a second coming song as well. Um, announcements. Announcements. We still have an opportunity to um, bless our community. Um, we have the toys for St. Joseph's children still back there. We are still passing out some stuff. We passed out a little bit of stuff for the uh, John Chisholm Memorial Boots and Blankets. Um, we're still doing that. And uh, what else do we have back there? 
called the food angel. Jill is passing out lots of food during this time of year. Um, she made some chili there on Wednesday. We took it down to uh, a camp where people have all their tents post, pitched and everything, and uh, passed out some chili, got a couple blankets and some clothes to those people. Um, so that, that's still going on, so you still have time to do that. Um, the 19th, next week, is when we're going to... Um, 18th is when Kim is going to take the stuff to St. Joseph's. And Sue is here today to take our stuff, our gift to Mintz Elementary. And that's what I wanted to do right now, is I wanted to go ahead and have um, have Sue come up, Sue Clark come up, and uh, just say a blessing over, over this that we're taking and give it to her. We have... Actually, I have a an offering plate that's full of an offering. Look at this. This is over $550 in gift cards. We have some, 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 blank, or some uh, coats here for the children as well. So uh, let's just, let's just uh, bless this and, and as we send it away to, to bless them. Heavenly Father... Holy Mother, Spirit that we call God, we thank you that we have the opportunity and we have the means to, to, to bless someone less fortunate than ourselves. And it, it brings us joy in our, in our hearts to know that you love us. And as we know that love and feel that love in our hearts, we want to share that love with other people. And let them know that you love them as well. Bless this. Let it be prosperous to them. And may it bring them joy, an inner joy that they need knowing your love. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 I have is that the last announcement I have. Um, I want to remind everybody if you haven't already, um, RSVP. Uh, Cindy and I are holding a uh, holiday open house here. That's why the tables are still set up the way they are. That is on the help me Saturday, Saturday, Saturday the 18th. Okay. At five o'clock. I don't have my calendar open. So, 30 to 8 30. so <laughs> five thirty to eight thirty. If you want to come and spend the whole time with us, that's fine. If you just want to drop in and say hi, make you a plate and buy, that's okay too. So uh, we just want to share the love that we have that we know in our heart with you all. So we have to sing Christmas carols. No, but we will be playing them. All right, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> you can sing along if we want. Sing to. along. Um, are there any other announcements? I know Peter isn't here to do the announcements. We have one announcement here. Oh, the names. Names. Are we supposed oh. to do that today? We're supposed to put them on there. To put their names on their ornament. Oh, oh! If you bring an ornament in for our tree, um, put your name on it. And what we're going to do is we're going to pass those out on Christmas Eve or whenever. Okay. We're going to pass those out and. What you do is you take the, the, the ornament that you have and you take it home and you keep it with you and you pray for that person for a whole year. So that's 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 the thought behind that. So you so if nothing else, you have at least one person praying for you all year. I think I should have brought in a lot of ornaments with my name. I need a lot of prayer. Well, it's that time of our service. Let us encourage us each other with love and encouragement as we uh, do our benediction together. Christ has no body but ours, no hands nor feet nor wheels but ours. Ours are the eyes through which Christ's compassion is to look out on this world. And ours are the feet and wheels which with Christ goes about doing good. And ours are the hands which Christ blesses us now and blesses all the world.
singing that song, you know, just, just uh, that strong gospel. Oh, man. Anyway, go tell it on the mountain. Receive the parting blessing. As we leave here today, may the knowledge of how much God loves and blesses you and fills you with that inner joy, a joy no one can take away from you. And now let us go and share that true joy with the world that they too we know how much God loves them too. Amen. Amen. Amen.